With extensive work already finished on Whole lot of Red, Playboy Cardi did something it seems a lot of artists do these days and decided to completely rework his creative vision for a new version of the album. With this new vision came the height of Cardi's sound and voice experimentation with him focusing heavily on developing what fans have dubbed the baby voice on tracks developed during this middle point in the album's life. In this video, we will be covering the period of time from mid-2019 when Cardi decided to take Whole lot of Red back to the drawing board up through November 2020 when Kanye West became the executive producer of the album and the sound and creative vision shifted drastically once again. This era has by far some of the best Cardi leaks ever and was hugely important for refining the sound that Cardi was going for on the official release of the album. After his major contributions to the first version of Whole Lotta Red, Cardi continued to cook up in the studio with Pierre Bourne and some new production talent as well. For the first portion of this video, we are going to go through a pseudo timeline that I put together correlating producer credits and file name dates in order to come up with a cohesive progression of events for the album's development. Based on file name dates and production credits, we know that Cardi worked with Pierre Bourne, Richie South, and Jetson Maid. For the songs he did with Pierre, four of them were made on the same day during the same session, so I'm going to confidently speculate that other songs Pierre made with Cardi that do not have file name dates were made on or around this specific point in time so that they can all be discussed in the same grouping. I'll do this for both Richie South as well as Jetson Maid because those two along with Pierre make up the major timeline points for the album during this period. With that out of the way, we can now start at the very beginning of this era, when Cardi decided to rework the album's overall sound and linked up with Pierre for one of the most integral studio sessions from this period. On May 10th, 2019, Pierre and Cardi together created Triple V, Xan, Red Ice, and Rockstar tracks, all of which are pretty good and would have sounded great with an official release. On or around this date in mid-2019, Cardi and Pierre also worked on a couple of other notable songs, with the first being Friends, which was fully intended to drop potentially as a single and even had paperwork filed for its release. <laughs> The duo revisited Not Real slash Molly from the previous Whole Lotta Red era, now adding a new verse over where there was previously open song. <laughs> They also made Diamonds and Homicide at some point as well. Interestingly enough, the beat that was later used for Surf from Young Thug's 2019 album So Much Fun was made by Pierre and was previewed in a video where Cardi is also shown, meaning it was likely made during the recording sessions between Pierre and Cardi and may have even had Cardi record for it before being given to Thug.
Moving into June 2019, Cardi had reportedly developed a track list for the album and declared Pierre Bourne as the executive producer, showing how instrumental he was to the album's development. Unfortunately, we only know of three songs from this track list, with the rest remaining a mystery. The first is X Files, which is the original version of Teen X that would go on to release in 2020 with a feature from Future. In its early stages, it had an alternate verse from Cardi in the space where Future would end up and still had a Molly Raw producer tag, indicating his contributions to the song. Next is Friends, which we mentioned previously, and the final song that we know was on the tracklist is Place, that was being brought over from earlier work on the album, although it is unclear whether Place would have been reworked or evolved, besides that it was definitely intended to be included on a potential album drop. The next solid date we have in a whole lot of Red V2's development comes on October 16th, 2019, when Cardi linked up with Richie South to make Too Many. <laughs> Richie's production is an absolute staple of this period of the album's development, and him and Cardi made some incredible songs while working on this creative concept. On or around this date, they also crafted My Cup. Superstar, which was reportedly considered to be featured on the album, which probably would have been a new track list with Richie's large involvement in new tracks towards the end of 2019. <laughs> You Can Do It Too, which was actually supposed to be the second single dropping after Add Me, which dropped in 2020. In addition to those songs, Cardi and Richie also made Bitch Boy and Things Too, which concludes Richie's contributions to the album. Nigga, he a beach boy. Left rice in the green, 2.6 boy. Left rice in our side, ain't shit boy. Take the shit out the side, ain't shit boy. To finish out 2019, after putting in tons of work with multiple producers working on two different versions of the same album, Cardi finally got in the studio with Jetson Made to make two songs that best encompass the overall sound Cardi was going for by reworking Whole Lotta Red the first time. In December of 2019, Cardi and Jetson made At Me, which would go on to release as a single in 2020 to not amazing reception from fans and critics. Jetson also made Money and Drugs with Cardi likely also around this time due to his involvement with At Me and how similar the two songs sound. On February 2nd, 2020, Cardi hopped back in the studio with Richie South to make headshots, which would go on to be considered for Donda by Kanye, even appearing on a Donda tracklist, although Kanye never interacted with the song besides showing interest in it. April 16th, 2020 would see the release of At Me, which was intended to be the first single for the release of Whole Lotta Red in its current form in the middle of 2020. Cardi would end up being heavily criticized for his use of the baby voice in this song, along with its overall sound, leading to him becoming dissatisfied with the state of Whole Lotta Red and bringing in Kanye as executive producer to once again overhaul the project. In November of 2020, Kanye was officially made executive producer of Whole Lotta Red, and the album's sound and creative vision went through one last major transition, which I will cover in the 
the next video, hereby marking the end of the album's second version. Now that we have covered a rough timeline of the development of Whole Lotta Red during this late 2019 and early 2020 period, we can move on to discussing a few more key points. Longtime friends and collaborators Cardi and Uzi did not stop their work together during this time, with more than a few tracks made. It is unclear, however, whether these songs were intended for Whole Lotta Red V2 or Eternal A Take, or maybe even their unreleased collab album 1629. Maybe the songs were considered for all of the above, but they probably sound the most in line with Whole Lotta Red V2's overall sound. Together, Uzi and Cardi made Pass It, which was actually accidentally uploaded to streaming services in 2023 as part of Uzi's Pink Tape, even though it had been taken off the album after Cardi asked for it to be removed for the album's release. The song was originally made during this Whole Lotta Red V2 sessions between Cardi and Uzi, so it's weird that Cardi asked him not to include it on Pink Tape. They also made SRT, which featured production from Out of Town and Brandon Finessen, Sauce, produced by Lucrative and Brandon Finessen, and Cartier, which was produced by none other than Pierre Bourne. Two other songs I want to highlight from this area are Celine, produced by Zwifa. And Pop Our Pills, produced by Juber Lee and Rourke Bailey. Despite this period of album development being filled to the brim with amazing production and Cardi vocals, the negative reception of Atme combined with the introduction of Kanye as new executive producer unfortunately doomed this middle section of Whole Lotta Red's life to be sentenced to unreleased purgatory. Although the album would get reworked once again before its official release in 2020, the sounds and creative direction from the late 2019 and early 2020 period of Whole Lotta Red's development certainly left a lasting impact on the album and set the stage for the next vision that was executed for Whole Lotta Red's third revision. If you guys enjoyed this video, it would mean a lot if you could leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and I will see you in the third part of my series covering the life of Whole Lotta Red.